Evening, Levenites. Here we are in the uh, middle of beautiful sunny Dublin here to talk uh, the first of a series of videos, we hope, in order to sell you tickets to Levon Night number six. Thank you. Levon Night number six, which is taking place on the 20th of April in the Sugar Club here in Dublin. To get your tickets, go to sugarclub.com for the very measly price of 2250 which is ridiculous, really, don't you oh. think? It's too cheap. You get Graham here, you get uh, the Stripes, you get David Keenan, you get uh, the Eskies, you get Gavin Glass, Mary Stokes and Skinny Elvis. Uh, who am I leaving out? I can't remember. You get me talking crap in between each acts as well. That's probably worth the money in itself. Anyway, we're here to talk. Where does all the money go? Where does all the money go? Into my pocket. Is it? No. It goes to the Irish Cancer Society. And uh, this is, as I said, the sixth year. And so far, the Leave One Nights have raised about 17,500 euros, which is not to be sneezed at. So the hope is this year, push it over the magic 20,000. That's where you come in and you can help by buying a ticket. Now, the reason uh, this takes place around the 20th of April every year is because it's the anniversary of the sad passing of Levon Helm, Levon Helm of the band fame and also Solar Records, the, the greatest singing drummer maybe in the world. You're probably going to say yes. Of course I'll say yes. Say, well, apart from you, of course. Thank you. Now, uh, in case you don't know who this is, sorry, this is Graham Hopkins, famed Irish drummer. Oh, thank you. With uh, My Little Fun House, Therapy, The Frames, The Swell Season, Gemma Hayes, everybody, Cranberries, no, not Cramp. He's just saying, well, he played with Dolores Reardon, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. At the late Dolores Reardon. And, uh, of course, uh, played with Glenn Hansard for many years as well. And Glenn's solo stuff, including his recent fine, very fine album, which is only good because Graham is not really. Thank you. Not at all. Now, Graham, let's talk about Levon Helm. Uh, where and when would you heard Levon first? First of all, you're a huge fan, that's fair to say. Oh, beyond belief. Yeah. Beyond belief fan. Like yourself? Like myself, indeed. Yeah, yeah I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Well, I'm a huge fan of, of, of the band yeah. uh, as, as, a, uh, as a musical force, for, especially the first two albums. And I think the, one of the main strengths, there's many strengths to the man's music, but it's uh, Levon, not only his drumming, which is obviously fantastic, but it's the authenticity of his voice yeah. to me. And I think the strongest band songs are the ones that he sings on. I'd agree. Yeah. I'd so agree. when. Uh, I know where I would have heard it first, but let's talk about you, because nobody wants to hear about me. Uh, and nobody wants to hear about me, they want to hear about Levon. Levon, well then tell us about Levon. Hearing the band first, uh, how would you first get into him? How would you first well, I, I think I first, I suppose like a lot of people, you know, the, Le the band were one of those bands that I suppose, I, being, being, being very young, Mm. Like I am. Like you are now, yeah. 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 But this was even younger. Oh, this was even younger. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. Into heat. Mm. But, um... Put an egg. <clears throat> oh, yeah. It's in my dad's pants at the time. <laughs> lovely, lovely. But, um... Keep it clean, family show. Family, family, family show, keep it clean. But, um... You take your hand away from your so, mouth, young lad. Sorry. <laughs> um... So, we'll leave, keep it there. Yeah. So, good. anyway... Um... The band's songs were kind of like those songs that you'd hear floating about. Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. a lot of his, a lot of the hits were those band songs that you know you might hear, even sometimes at a wedding. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. You'd hear other people doing them. Yeah, yeah you yeah. would. And there were those songs that you might even kind of go, "Whose song was that?" Mm. But but they were kind of like, oh, "I love that." song but they don't know whose it is you'd sing along yeah, yeah you know at the end of a night or throughout a night yeah but then <clears throat> i have to admit it was the re-release of the last waltz which really blew me away and put shivers everywhere throughout my body we're talking about the last waltz now the movie rather than i suppose the big massive box the yeah the movie the 1970 Yes. Six, I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, yes, it was, like it was around 1976. Yeah, I think you're right. And which was something that I'd seen, that's something that was definitely on TV and yeah. which I highly respected, which I thought was slick ass um, because it had so many influential great musicians, you know, and the thing about it was, for me, seeing people like Clapton and you know, him and Robbie having kind of face-offs mm, and his mm. strings and his tuning and Robbie kind of yeah. stealing the limelight. And mm. uh, Levon did 
you know, do it for me then, and then Ringo getting up. This is just me being such a Beatles fan, you know. Yeah. But then upon that re-release, I remember being on tour with Gemma Hayes, and I know you mentioned Gemma, and it was an amazing year. But I remember being on a tour, bu a tour bus, was doing a long uh, journey, mm. and watching it, and uh, it's just absolutely blowing my mind. Mm. It giving me shivers in every possible part of my body. And uh, seeing Levon seeing the night they drove all Dixie down. Mm. Oh, that was just just so monumental. So that was about 2001, 2002, I mm. think. And that just changed everything for me. It really changed well, what, absolutely everything how, for Do you me. mean by that, I mean... I think I know what you mean because yeah. of, uh, uh, knowing you for a while. But I mean, is that a case that you, at that point, would have gone off and maybe investigated the band's music more and started to change your own kind of musical yes. outlook? Really, yes, yeah. it really, really did. Hmm. Yeah, I really did. Because um, before that, I was in a heavy band which I had left, and I was definitely into even Trade being in that band. I was into the polar opposite of the music I played. And anyway, I was yeah. into much more mellow. Music, you know, mm -hmm. um, but then I hear, I heard this, you know, I was a big, huge Neil Young fan anyway. Mm. It was all over that last waltz, you know, but yeah. the, the remixed, remastered, edited version they took away his. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. These, there was these white things. I wonder can they do that with my red eyes for this video? Yes. Anyway. I don't know what these white things were yeah, on his no. nose. He had a lot of dandruff in his nasal hair, yes, I believe. But they kind of got rid of them. Because mm. I even when I saw his video, I noticed them on his mm. nose. Um, they got rid of them. And uh, there were so many songs that just did it for me. Mm. Which, of course, we'll be playing. I yeah, I believe, we'll be on, playing I believe on the 20th of April, that's right. Which, uh, I think, Square Pegs, with myself and Colin Kearney mm. and Conor Brady. Um, and a host of others, uh, we'll be playing just purely the Levon yeah, songs yeah. and other ones from Levon's albums. Mm. Uh, so after that, there was many things happened with me in my career that mm -hmm. I not just played Levon gigs, but unbelievably managed to, you know, hang out with Levon. Yeah, now, let's talk screen. about that. You said for, you said you met him first at uh, a festival, which was. Bonnaroo Festival Bonnaroo. in um, Tennessee. Um, around what year were we talking about there? Um, that was when we were when touring with uh, Glenn Hansen and Mark Eric Glover after the Oscar, after the film was. Oh, right. So you're a big deal at that stage. The, the act was a big deal. I mean, yeah, was, the swell yeah. season. Yeah. Uh, just touring non-stop, uh, especially in the States, doing mm. so many festivals. Raking it in, making hay when the sun shines. Oh, hey. Nice. Look at me now. Look at you now, I've exactly. I've got, got my uh, helicopter. Where did it all go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, at this Bonnaroo Festival, you spot, what, so you, you were trying to tell me this, you spot him on the lineup. You spot yeah, the he name was on the, the lineup, line which for me was beyond yeah. surreal. Oh my God, Lee Van Helms on the lineup. Mm. Uh, first of all, uh, it's a thing that I repeatedly say, but for good reason, really, because do you remember that thing way back in the day? It was called MySpace. I vaguely remember it. I'm a bit yes. younger than you, but yeah, I, you I, might I, I be. Think, yeah. I think my, my father told me something about Did it. Yeah. I think it was MySpace.com. Mm. And one of the things that you could put in your profile was your uh, likes. Was it? What was it? your likes? Or yeah. three things you'd like to achieve in your life, or you'd uh, like to meet. Mm. So I put down these three people and they were being the drummer mm. they were three drummers yeah first off was gene krupa okay. famous jazz big band drummer sure uh, gene krupa and i said uh, unlikely the guy's r.i.p mm. he's that, well, that, he's yeah, that makes it fairly unlikely. big you know mm. yeah depending on your religious outlook very much so just come past easter yeah you know, you know? well i'm I'm not Mutton Jeff, Mutton Jeff, I'm still... No, know. and hopefully that won't happen for a long time. Yeah. Anyway, let's roll on here. Mutton, uh, mutton Jeff, that makes sense. Not mutton, brown bread. Brown bread, thank you. Sorry, that's Mutton Jeff, that's... Jeff. Thank you. Anyway, 
So, that's unlikely. And the next one was John Bonham, who's in the same... He's in the same... Department. Dimension, yeah. Yes, dimension even. So, the next one, I just wrote down Levon Helm, because mm. he's still kicking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, as unlikely as it seemed to myself, there was a bit of... Yeah, there was a hope. Yeah, there was a hope. So there. at this Bonnaroo, right? So you see, you spot him on the, you spot his name on the, the list. I mean, I presume you approached him. I did, did. You? and you know the way there's nerves, yep. my oh, yeah, nervous yeah. hands, yeah. everything were like that. Mm. But I did, and I had this was even before these things called uh, iPhones. Yes. You know, I had like a, a normal Nokia. I think I had a camera with me, mm. Mm -hmm. and I approached them, and the fantastic Simon Good. Or maybe it was Joseph Doyle, bass player, and Simon did backline. They were along with me, and uh, I went up to leave on. Just oh my god, it was beyond nervous. Everything was shaking. Mm. Gave the guys one of my things. I went up to leave on, leave on. Mm. I went up to him, and I was like, hey, 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 I couldn't even talk. Hey, can I get my? And he just went, yeah, man, no, oh, yeah, mm. you know, in a southern accent. And I got my photo taken. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, you know, yeah, Leave on yeah. Helm, and it was like me and just me and Leave on just. And that was exactly it. So, just I had that one moment with mm. me and Leave on Helm. So, that was it. That was mm. it. So, you didn't, you, at that point, you didn't really talk to him or anything. You just had didn't. Just right? shook his hand, yeah. and I Fair had point. that moment. And that was and enough that, for you. That was enough for yeah. me. I didn't feel like I needed to go any further yeah. because that's okay. all I wanted to do was to. You know, touch the man. Absolutely, but that's not the end of the story, though. It's Go not. Forward it's bit. not the end of the further. Not the end of the story. But I don't know if I need to go further because I think people might fall to sleep. Fall asleep. Well, well, Graham has told the story, and it is a good story, and it's worth repeating as well because you got to, you did get to hang out with the man. You did get to, you had more contact with him than just having a photograph. Taken yeah, out, big time, know? big time, and. You know, I, I, tell us about it. Let's just, people won't be bored. If people, if people have made it this far, they're going to keep going. That's okay. Okay. So, I'll go on. Yeah, go on. Go on. Okay. So, my story mm -hmm. is that, watch the gig. Phenomenal gig, of course. Right, yeah. It was Lee Vaughan with his band. And uh, I was in tears, standing up the very front, just, you know, taking in every single bar of every song. I couldn't believe... I was watching and what was he right? just out of interest? I mean, was it um, he was playing stuff from the the very uh, well received solo albums? Yes. I presume around that time. You're yeah. talking about electric. Is it electric dirt? Is yeah, it? yeah, electric dirt. Yeah, I don't want to know too well, but I mean, yeah. my question though is: was he pl he was playing stuff from that? But was he also doing the stuff he'd be more famous for as well? Was he doing? He, he, he'd stick in a few. Yeah, yeah, he right. definitely would. He had to, and everybody go well, crazy. Uh, yeah, I presume yeah. everyone was expecting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, and he did, you know, and he had his uh, daughter Amy there, you know, and uh, he, he had a great horn section and it was great. Mm. It really was so mm. enjoyable. I loved it. And it was so groovy. It was so brilliant, mm. so earthy, so dirty, you know. It yeah, was, yeah. Oh, it was great. Yeah. You know, really yeah. loved it. Um, so we did another festival, unbelievably about, I suppose, a month or two months later, we were in the studio recording the the next Swell Season right. album, and uh, at the end of it, there was another festival, mm. and uh, it was kind of ridiculous uh, because the lineup it was Bob Dylan mm. headlining, and then which Probably. which of course with Glenn and several of the members of the, of the Swell Season was. I had a big drunken row one night with Glenn about Bob Dylan, and then he. How he won the you know how he won the argument was saying, well I know Bob Dylan, so I had to shut up then. Did you? That was it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Go on. What do you say after that? Okay. <laughs> you know. Anyway, sorry. I'm just thinking of some things you could might might have possibly maybe said, but anyway. Well, no, he put me in the place in. there, which is fair enough. Right. Anyway, this lineup Bob Dylan is on the is on the bill. And then leave on. Leave on. And then we were on before leave on. Right. And then I remember. Uh, there's a few other, you know, very great artists on as well. So it was a, it was fantastic. Mm. And what's sorry, which one was this? What was the name of this one? Uh, Where this was, this? was in. It was pretty near Woodstock. It was mm. upstate New York. Mm -hmm. a great day out. So of course me, being myself, uh, I just wanted to, looking forward to seeing Levi mm. again. Mm. So during the day, basically I went and introduced myself to him. 
again, but he was just, you know, total gentleman, mm. you know, waved my hand. Yeah. And, and had, he, had he any idea, he, was he aware of that you were playing with him or, you know, so, on the bill? You know, or? Because imagine how many festivals. I don't know, yeah, you know, I mean, I'd be surprised if he did, it no offence to you. But if I, I got to shake his hand this time, and yeah. I kind of, because I was on the same line, mm. line up as in my, uh, yeah. I was a tall gentleman and tried mm. to keep my, myself so, tried to keep my nerves together and he was a great man. Mm. He was a great man and I couldn't believe myself I was doing no, this. No, what a thrill it must have been for you, yeah. So absolutely. we talked to Barbara who is uh, uh, still Levon's manager because you can mm. imagine the amount of stuff she has, still has to manage with Levon's uh, career and Howard who is a uh, a Glenn Hansard's manager. Mm. We got talking about the possibility of maybe doing one of Levon Ham's gigs in his uh, his rambles. His midnight midnight rambles in uh, Woodstock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, I'm sure everybody watching this is aware of those. Uh, if not, go check out um, that Black Crows DVD, whose name I can't remember, which they filmed there. The midnight ramble. <laughs> She's fantastic. And Glenn, and not Glenn, sorry, uh, um, Levon is, is all over the DVD, it's fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. There's many <coughs> more stories that could go on and go on, mm. but we did, we got to do one of them. Did you get to play with him? We, uh, we got to do one of them in Levon's house. Yeah. And, uh, sorry for burping. That's okay. It was this nice coffee. And we got to do one of them, I got to play on Levon's kit. Uh, I remember Levon and me then unbelievably surreally actually talking drums mm. after the gig um, uh, I was with my you know one of my my absolute yeah I'm sure surreal heroes could mm. not believe it talking drums there's a picture beside his fridge in his kitchen of uh, for those of you who don't know drummers there was various pictures of drummers like uh, Elvin Jones mm. Uh, Gene Krupa, who we yeah. mentioned, uh, I remember when I started talking about Elvin Jones, he came up to the fridge and there was me and Levon talking drums and the rest of the guys, uh, like the rest of uh, Glenn and the rest of the, uh, the Frames guys were just left out and they were like, oh, but it was because it was two drummers mm, talking mm. drums. It was probably, the conversation was probably speeding up and slowing down. Really. It was, it was. It was all right, see you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you walked into that. All right. All anyway, right. you would describe that, I presume, the way I can see it in your eyes. That this must have been one of the highlights of your career. Yeah, you? I mean, yeah. I've, I've, I have numerous other stories of me and Levon talking drums hmm. at different festivals we'd appear at, rather than talking to anybody else. So it's a case he'd, that he'd, he'd go, ah, oh, Jesus, hey, Graham, Graham. Oh, yeah, yeah, you fantastic. know, and yeah. uh, he'd talk to me about what kid I was playing that yeah. day. And, uh, that's the truth, and you know, from this face, uh, from the MySpace thing that I, mm. and there was like a year, two years later, there I was, wow. numerous festivals hanging out with the main man. That is which, pretty yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, beyond. The reason we're here, because we, we did go, we did get a bit carried away there. That fine story. Um, we're here because of uh, the Levi night. Now you have played. This is the sixth one coming up. You have played them all. You have yeah. you have, uh, you have double gigged one night as well, where you had to run around to Whelan's yeah. uh, because uh, you didn't yeah. want to miss it. And you almost. I mean, one of the highlights of, of I, I like I'm working on it this year. But yet, yeah, yeah, before I've been the drunk guy in the in the front row. But I can always remember that um, you telling these stories yeah. has been a very special thing. So it's a very. It, it really is something that you wouldn't miss. When it's on. Yeah, like, Ro Roisin does yeah. absolutely amazing absolutely. work putting this together, yeah. and it is yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And uh, because of my love for Levon, hmm. uh, and then like making like great friends, which is beyond surreal, and indeed with all of his um, community, hmm. and then losing him was such a loss mm. you know and then for this gig to be put together i feel like it's something that i want to do to give anything back i can mm. uh, to leave on and to his community mm. and then to cancer society mm -hmm. and i know we all have let's say um a society a community that that we want to give mm -hmm you know, a charitable, charitable support back to, and we also have uh, 
friends, family that have suffered from we sure do, yeah. from cancer, mm. and uh, I do too. You know, apart from uh, Levon, you know, and uh, that's why I think annually uh, this is without doubt the most special night for me. So uh, I'm willing to give it 110 percent. Yeah, can't say further than that. So Graham will be. Um, that was lovely, Graham, by the way. Um, Graham will be playing with uh, the Square Pegs, which is his Irish super group. <laughs> uh, you, Con Kearney, uh, who's playing tonight? Is is, uh, is Connor playing? Connor Brady is Connor Brady, is playing yeah. tonight. And who else have you got? Who's on bass? Uh, we've got, well, we've got. Uh, you know you? Uh, yeah, who's yeah, in we town? do. Well, we, it's usually who's in town, yeah. but he's like usually, or not usually. There's been several years where we've. Uh, um, Change the lineup mm. on the day, mm -hmm. but this year it is uh, Naomi Coleman right. who's playing bass uh, on with us, uh, and then it's it's just you, Colin McConnor, anyway. It is, mm. but like, no, I'm trying to think about who's guesting with, like, because I know Gavin Glass is gonna guest with us. Well, is Brian. Uh... Harmonica Brian getting up with you. Maybe he's around. Actually, who knows what'll happen on the yeah, night, you know? That's a great thing about it's it. It's a great thing about it, yeah. And I know there's a certain gentleman who the world cannot. You ready? I am, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm very excited. Here's the big one for me as well. Any time to save it. Okay. David Keenan. Yes. No, David King is doing a solo set that night, but is he going to get up with you guys as well? Yeah. Are you playing behind him? Are it's the square like, pegs playing behind him? Yes. Jesus, what a night this is going to be. How could you miss yes. this? Yes. How could you miss it? So David Keenan is going to get up uh, and play a few, and uh, it's it's just going to be outrageously outrageous. Okay. Look, we better cut it down there because we've been going for ages. Look at that. 22, 22. minutes. So if anyone is still watching... Let's reiterate the main points of our argument here. The 20th of April in the Sugar Club in a beautiful Dublin town, the uh, sixth annual Leave on Helm Tribute Night uh, for the Irish Cancer Society, which is the main reason you should go anyway. But not only that, with the lovely Graham Hopkins here, Thank as he's you. just described at length his connections with uh, his, his uh, very precious connections with, with Leave on Helm. Um, we have him playing with the Square Pegs which are uh, just the cream of, of uh, Dublin's musical set. We have David Keenan, as you mentioned. We have the Stripes, uh, which are, who are always fantastic. We have the Eskies. We have... Uh, Gavin Glass. We have Gavin, the fabulous Gavin Glass. Uh, we have Mary uh, Stokes playing with Skinny Elvis, which will be fantastic. I think they're kicking off, which will be a fantastic thing. And more special guests possibly still to be confirmed. Um, all that's left for me to say, we'll be back uh, later this week with more videos. All that's left for me to say is a very thank, very thank you, Pat. Genuine thanks to uh, Graham Hopkins, a lovely chat there. Leave on tickets on sale at thesugarclub.com. We'll see you there in the night.